Good afternoon. It's an honor and privilege to have the opportunity to present Guilford County Citizens the 2017 State of the County Report. While this is the first time this has been done since I've been on the board, we thought it would be a good opportunity to up update our citizens on some of the activities of Guilford County over the past year while highlighting some of the progress we've made on the focus areas established by the Board of Commissioners. On a positive note, based on recent information, our county's population is growing at a steady pace. The current population is estimated to be a little over 517,000. That's an increase of about 29,000 citizens, or 5.8% since the last census was completed in 2010. The economy is growing at a respectable pace, evidenced by the successes of the past year as existing industry has expanded in a healthy manner, as well as several new business announcements involving significant job creation and private investment within Guilford County. While our recovery has been slower than many would prefer, the stage is set, in my view, on the economic development front for a very bright future. Our collaborative, more regional approach over the past two years is expected to stimulate many more opportunities for new job growth here in Guilford County. Guilford County communities have a strong and diverse history of success that deserves our continued focus as commissioners. There's much work to be done, and it'll be our mission to make strategic decisions and continually support our residents, property owners, and businesses in a way that's attractive and compelling to existing and outside business interests. Our goal is to support an economic and community atmosphere that attracts higher paying jobs and enhances the quality of life for our citizens in the coming years. The commissioners have established focus areas, which I'll expand on in a moment, in order to more effectively prioritize our efforts and resources in a strategic and accountable fashion. Before I begin my report, I would like to recognize the service of former Commissioner Ray Trapp. As you may know, Mr. Trapp recently resigned from the board to accept a career opportunity with North Carolina A&T State University. Ray contributed significantly to our progress over the last four and a half years. We'll miss him, and we wish him and his family the very best in his future endeavors. Our first of seven Board of Commissioners focus areas is economic development. While there's still much to be accomplished on the economic development front, the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance, in a partnership between the City of Greensboro, the City of High Point, Guilford County, the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce, and the High Point Economic Development Corporation, the GCEDA was established in November of 2015 and continues to work collaboratively to promote the assets of the county as a whole. The Alliance has adopted a strategic plan to guide economic development efforts across the county and throughout the region and continues to implement recruitment strategies focused on key target industry clusters, such as advanced manufacturing, aviation, and logistics. The key to the success of our efforts now and in the future is collaboration, which I'm proud to report is now occurring in Guilford County on behalf of our citizens like never before. The March 2017 issue of Site Selection Magazine ranks Greensboro High Point sixth nationally for metro regions and populations between 200,000 and 1 million. Guilford County ranks first in the state of North Carolina and fourth in the southeastern United States with 33,232 manufacturing jobs. Manufacturing is in our DNA and with the economic development initiatives such as the Greensboro Randolph Megasite as one example, our citizens can look forward to a very bright future for manufacturing opportunities in Guilford County. In 2016, between new corporate announcements and existing industry expansions, over 3,600 new jobs were announced with over $160 million in private investment in the county. Included in these totals are corporate, uh, corporate headquarters announcements from Corvo Incorporated and Heritage Home Group. The county's unemployment rate for February of this year was 5.1 percent, with 13,407 of the county's labor force, 
of just over 260,000 unemployed, which is down 0.6% from February of 2016. But we can do better. We must do better. Guilford County's unemployment rate is equal to the state average for North Carolina and slightly above the U.S. rate of 4.7%. The next county focus area is education. The Board of Commissioners continues to make investing in public education its top priority. We've increased Guilford County Schools funding for both operating and facilities each of the past four years and anticipate doing so again this year. When combined with debt service obligations specific to Guilford County Schools, the county's total public schools appropriation is nearly $262 million of our budget, or approximately 44% of the overall county budget. The county recently issued the last series of general obligation bonds related to the May 2008 bond referendum including $130 million for Guilford County Schools and almost $30 million for Guilford Technical Community College. Due to the county's AAA credit rating, the bond sale was well received by the investment community and structured carefully to gradually impact the debt service budget over the next several years. Over the past four years, the total outstanding bond debt for schools and community college had declined from more than a billion dollars in 2012 to about 688 million recently. However, with the recent funding of nine new school projects across the county, the outstanding education debt increased to just over 800 million, still more than 200 million dollars less than the debt obligation of the county in 2012. Realizing that the schools have ongoing capital and facility, need, uh, facility needs, the Board of Commissioners and the Board of Education, Education recently established a Joint Capital Facilities Committee to evaluate and prioritize future needs and strategically align those needs with the county's fiscal capacity. The goal is to achieve a more collaborative approach to planning, development, and paying for school capital projects. Our board's very encouraged by preliminary discussions, and we look forward to working more closely with the Board of Education to maximize our limited resources. Our next Guilford County focus area is healthy citizens. Guilford County diagnosed the community in 2016 in order to identify early signs and causes of ill health among county residents. The progress consisted of excuse me, the process consisted of face-to-face -face interviews with more than 400 citizens. These folks uh, were represented diverse geographic and socioeconomic backgrounds. The priority health issues identified were healthy eating, active living, social determinants, behavioral health, and maternal and child health. The county's Department of Health and Human Services, Public Health Division, is working with our local hospital systems, school systems, nonprofit networks and other agencies to develop action plans such as health education, health promotion activities, employment fairs, mental health services, and additional clinical health services to address these priority needs. This past year has brought many challenges as well as some improvements for the Children's Services Division. Since 2012, we've seen an alarming 62% increase in the number of children entering our care. We've responded by putting additional efforts and resources into keeping families together if children can be safe. We currently have about 560 children in foster care. We've shifted staff to meet the increased foster care caseload demands. We're working closer with our community partners for solutions to the growing numbers of children in foster care. On a positive note, we were successful in recruiting, training, and licensing 36 new foster care families in 2016. Additionally, Guilford County finalized 106 adoptions in 2016, the most adoptions in any, in any county of the state of North Carolina. That's great news. However, we're particularly asking churches and faith-based organizations 
to partner with the county and our Child Protective Services Department in finding ways to reduce this alarming trend in North Carolina and, frankly, across the nation. We can all agree that every child deserves a home. When the North Carolina FAST system was implemented in North Carolina, many counties had difficulties, to say the least, processing food and nutrition services applications and recertifications. With a growing caseload, coupled with the challenges presented by the, area, excuse me, by the new state technology, Guilford County improved internal processes and added positions and is now consistently one of the leaders among urban counties in North Carolina in timeliness of processing applications for over 45,000 people and $10.3 million in food nutrition benefits monthly. Our next Guilford County focus area is infrastructure. The county has initiated the site selection, planning, design, and development process for five new priority capital projects. The estimated cost for these projects is approximately $27 million, which includes a new animal shelter, phase one of a new EMS logistics center, renovation of the old detention center, demolition of the Zanke building, and construction of a much needed 180 space, excuse me, space surface parking lot for the Sheriff's Department and other county staff. In addition, the county is partnering with the towns of Oak Ridge, Stokesdale, and Summerfield to conduct an engineering study to determine, to determine the feasibility of constructing a public water system in those and other unincorporated areas of Guilford County. These areas continue to be some of the fastest growing parts of the county, and as such, serious consideration must be given to the future planning and infrastructure demands being placed on our limited resources, particularly in those areas. This water feasibility study will address public safety concerns for adequate volume, for fire protection, and quality drinking water. After the assessment is complete, the local governing boards will decide next steps regarding their possible involvement in any future system and its governing structure. Public safety is our next focus area. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office has reportedly, excuse me, has reported an overall 7% reduction in crime in the unincorporated areas of Guilford County during the calendar year 2016. This includes an overall reduction of 28% in violent crime, and a 7% reduction in property crimes. The crime rate for the current year, 2017, is down 13% compared to the same period in 2016. In June 2016, the new Special Operations Facility of the Guilford County Sheriff's Office was opened, replacing a leased building that was far too small and inadequate to accommodate the crime investigation needs of the department. The new Special Ops facility includes a more than 23,000 square foot working space and was constructed for a total cost of $3.6 million. We're extremely appreciative of Sheriff Barnes and the ongoing efforts of his entire department, as many of them put their lives on the line each and every day to serve and protect the citizens of Guilford County. We're proud to report that Guilford County Emergency Services became the first county in the state of North Carolina to receive emergency management accreditation program accreditation. We commend our emergency services department for making our county safer by following the highest standards of excellence on behalf of our citizens. EMS director Jim Albright and his team deserve a tremendous amount of credit and thanks for their exceptional work. We're also very grateful to my colleague and former EMS Director, Commissioner Alan Perdue, for helping to pave the way for this outstanding accomplishment during his many years of service to Guilford County citizens. The Guilford County Fire Division of Emergency Services has supported the county fire departments at every major working fire incident during the current fiscal year, including the addition of Squad 250 which operates 12 hours daily. 
Many of the rural fire departments are experiencing difficulty in recruiting and retaining personnel. And as such, expansion of the Guilford County Fire Division manpower has proven invaluable. This, these first responders are the heroes within our communities. And as with our law enforcement representatives across the county, we're deeply appreciative of the men and women who serve to protect our citizens' lives and property each and every day. To date, over 9,000 individuals and families have sought services at the Family Justice Center since the center opened in June of 2015. The Family Justice Center is truly a shining light on a hill, a beacon of hope for our citizens who are affected by domestic violence. Since its inception, the Family Justice Center has been selected as a Camp Hope America grant recipient from the Verizon Foundation. It's received a NACO Achievement Award in the Criminal Justice and Public Safety category. And just this morning, we learned that the Family Justice Center was again recognized at the national level with the 2017 National Association of Counties Achievement Award for their work with community partners addressing elder abuse. In 2013 and 14, Guilford County led the state in domestic violence-related homicides, with 10 and 11 in each of those years, respectively. In 2015, there was one domestic violence-related homicide, and three in 2016. Moreover, they ha there have been no fatalities associated with the 9,000 victims to date and their families who sought services from the Family Justice Center. Much thanks goes to Director Katherine Johnson and her awesome support staff, along with Commissioners Kay Cashin and Hank Henning for their leadership and consistent commitment to the center's development. And all of the individuals who represent the more than 25 local agencies that contribute to the life-saving efforts of the Family Justice Center every day. Thank you. Next is recreation and culture. Significant progress has been made in opening some of the open space preserved land acquired by the county for public access and use. During 2016, the county opened the Cascades Preserve to the public. Last month, phase one of the company mill and Safe Light properties were opened, as well as the McCandless Preserve, excuse me, Safe Right properties. I want to get that, get that right for our open space supporters. A consultant with expertise in trail design has been contracted to design walking and bike trails and other improvements at the Rich Fork Preserve in High Point. The preliminary design for possible trail improvements is expected to be completed and reviewed by our board soon. County parks are in better shape and attracting more visitors than ever. And much thanks goes to our Parks and Rec Department staff and Commissioner and Vice Chairman Alan Branson for his undying support and dedication to their efforts, along with every member of our Parks and Rec Advisory Board for everything they do to provide these high quality of life opportunities for our citizens. Our last but certainly not least focus area is organizational excellence. It's important for local governments to maintain a strong financial position in order to continue the delivery of services during times of economic downturn or uncertainty. With our recent general obligation bond issues, Fitch ratings, Moody's investor services, and Standard & Poor's each assigned a AAA rating to the bonds with a stable outlook. Some of the rationale and credit characteristics of the county cited in the reports included large tax base with a diversifying and expanding local economy within a broader Piedmont uh, economy. 
Next, solid financial position marked by conservative management and solid financial policies. Strong budgetary performance and flexibility. Very strong liquidity. Our our unallocated reserves are at levels not seen in many years, if ever. Along with a strong debt and contingent liability profile. Three years ago, the commissioners agreed to reduce the property revaluation cycle from eight years to every five years. The tax department recently completed the first revaluation since 2012. There were significantly fewer appeals than in 2012, with approximately 2,950 filed during the informal appeals period that ended March 17th. The results of the revaluation will not be final until until all appeals are reviewed. However, it appears that the overall increase in the county's real property base is about 5% since 2012. That said, the Board of Commissioners will always be sensitive to the county tax rate, as evidenced by a reduction in the tax rate three of the last four years. Additionally, we intend to remain fiscally responsible with our spending practices intent on the reduction of outstanding county debt and will support increased funding for education when possible with all public schools. I want to also briefly mention our progress at the Guilford County Animal Shelter over the past year and a half or so. Granted, there will always be challenges and opportunities for improvement at the shelter. Always. While excellence at every point of contact is our primary objective, when there are hundreds of animals in our care each and every day and thousands of animals and citizens served every year, there will be some missteps from time to time along the way. When concerns arise, we will not make excuses. We will not attempt to hide the truth from our citizens. We will address issues swiftly and specifically, regardless of the circumstance, from animal control practices within our communities to the welcoming attitude within the shelter lobby, from the medical attention animals may need at intake that provides them the best opportunity for recovery and adoption, to the critically important relationships with our volunteers and community partners. We intend to work hard every day to garner the reputation as having the most respected animal shelter in the state of North Carolina and our region. We have some work to do on that front, but everyone involved with the shelter is intent on accomplishing that goal. That said, I want to also communicate clearly that from my perspective, in spite of our recent staffing changes, in spite of any other challenges we've experienced more recently, and will no doubt be facing at times going forward. I believe we now have some of the most caring, qualified, and dedicated individuals overseeing the daily operations of the shelter than we've had in many, many years. As someone who was involved in the early discovery of the unfortunate issues we dealt with in the spring and summer of 2015, I can assure you that in spite of our current imperfections, the issues the shelter is facing today pales in comparison to the shelter's operations on every level at that time. I want to especially thank the members of the Animal Services Advisory Board, led by its chairman and liaison to the Board of Commissioners, Justin Conrad. These folks have been instrumental in making our progress possible. There are too many community partners that I have time to thank who've been critically valuable to our progress as well. We look forward to exciting times at the shelter as our board recently committed $9 million to the construction of a new shelter that we hope to break ground on later this year. This is something that should have been done many, many years ago in the third largest county of the state of North Carolina. We realize that a new facility in and of itself will not solve every issue in the incredibly complex animal services landscape. However, 
A new state-of-the-art shelter will go a long way to making our citizens proud again of the commitment, resources, and care being provided to the animals at our shelter. As we look ahead, we want to invite every Guilford County citizen to be a part of our commitment to, again, making Guilford County one of the most respected animal shelters in the nation. And finally, I've said recently that some of our members are concerned with the results of our mental health services in Guilford County. Meeting the mental health needs of our citizens is an except, in an exceptional manner is, in my view, one of the most important priorities of the Board of Commissioners. Local behavioral health partners must work more effectively together than ever before. Going through the motions, expecting the same or worse outcomes year after year is no longer acceptable. Our board recently formed a mental health subcommittee with the intention of thoroughly examining the current practices around the delivery of these services in Guilford County and making recommendations to our board for how citizens in care of mental health providers can experience better long-term results. Obviously, this is a very complex arena and one that will require time and focused attention in an effort to guide behavioral health administrators and caregivers toward better outcomes. Again, we look forward to working more closely with our community partners in the delivery of solutions that better serve our county. In closing, as you've heard, there's so much to be proud of about our progress over the past several years and much to look forward to in 2017 and beyond. However, there are also some very significant challenges and concerns that the Board of Commissioners intends to take very seriously and will be focusing on in the coming months and years. We do not intend to let our citizens down. I want to thank our board members, county staff, and especially our citizens for the opportunity to serve as our board's chairman the past two years and as your District 5 county commissioner for the past four and a half years. It's been a great honor and privilege, and Lord willing, I look forward to serving you for many years to come. As a final thought, if you as a citizen of Guilford County ever have a concern a need, would like to provide feedback, information, or any encouragement that you feel will be helpful for any of us, please do not hesitate to contact your commissioner. You can very easily find our individual contact information at www.myguilford.com. Again, thank you. God bless you all. May God continue to bless Guilford County, the great state of North Carolina, and the United States of America. Thank you. Take a 15-minute break and begin our regularly scheduled meeting at 545. Promptly, please. Thank you very much again.